Join the Greater Refuge Temple every Sunday morning for Sunday morning worship. This world will not end by COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. Don't let anyone cause you to lose faith in God. And from the waters, He lifted me. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You would have been in a nut house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got him. Free in the Holy Spirit, enjoying the greatest freedom of all. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed just as well as the doors that God has opened. 11 a.m. Streaming live from Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, greaterrefugetemple.org. Oh God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that same God who is immutable, unchangeable, he cannot change. Heard the word of the prophet, and the fire of God fell. There's some of us in here that realize that if it had not been, Remember, those who pray can expect a miracle. Bishop Charles E. Wright, Senior Pastor. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., Assistant Pastor. You are tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. Somebody give him praise right where you are. We want the Lord to rest on us like the dew in the morning. Hallelujah. Someone say, like the dew in the morning. Gently rest on my heart. We want the Lord to rest on our hearts this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad to see you in the house this morning. Say it like you mean it. I'm glad to see you in the house. Glad to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my Do in the morning. Like the doing. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May like to do in the morning, you'll rest upon our hearts and rule in our lives. We want God to rule today in continuance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the best ways to have him to rule in our hearts is to call upon his name in prayer. Prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer. Hallelujah. Faith unlocks the door. We ask everyone to please stand at this time as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Minister Linton will come and he will lead us in prayer. And following the prayer, we'll have the reading of our scripture by Minister George Harriet, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Minister Linton, let everyone please stand.
Hallelujah. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. Look to our God, our mighty God, our everlasting Father. As Romans chapter 8, 28 said, And we know that all things work together for the good. Them that love the Lord call according to his purpose. Do you love him today? No need to worry. All things work together for the good. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you once more for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Oh God, for woke us up this morning to see a brand new day. Someone is in need of you today. Someone that's assembled here with us today came for some reason. Someone is going through, Lord Jesus, but thank you for your encouraging word that all things work together for the good. Oh God, we love you this morning because you first love us. You send your son, Jesus Christ, oh God, to die for our sin. Oh God, sins of the world, Lord Jesus, please forgive us of our sins this morning, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness this morning, Lord. Rebuke all the plans of the enemy this morning, Lord Jesus. We look unto you because you are our helper. You are our maker. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And as we come before you, Lord Jesus, looking unto you because we know with your things are possible. Someone is in need this morning, Lord Jesus. Jesus, someone is looking unto you this morning. Someone is crying out unto you this morning. Because we're help coming from you. Do it for someone this morning. Take this service in charge this morning. Rebuke all the plans of the enemy this morning. Dismantle every plan of the enemy this morning. Oh God, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise that you are your name. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And somebody say, Amen. Somebody say, Thank you. Somebody say, Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Praise God this morning. Thank you, Jesus. As soon as those are seated, enter the sanctuary. I'll be reading uh, Isaiah 53. At least we never forget. Thank you, Jesus. The choir touched my heart, praise the Lord. At least we never, ever forget. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Now Jesus, Jesus had no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see Jesus, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus is despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrows. Jesus was acquainted with grief, and we hid our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he, Jesus, has borne our griefs, and Jesus has carried our sorrows. Yet we, dis we did esteem him stricken, and Jesus was smitten of God and afflicted. But Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement of our peace was upon Jesus and with his stripes. With Jesus' stripes, we are healed. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Jesus was oppressed. Jesus was afflicted. Yet Jesus opened not his mouth. Jesus is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is dumb, Jesus opened not his mouth. Jesus was taken from prison, from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? Jesus was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken, and Jesus made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in Jesus' mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord God to bruise Jesus. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, thank you, Jesus. His seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous service justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Finally, therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because Jesus has poured out his soul unto death, and Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. And Jesus bare the sins of many. And Jesus made intercessions for the transgressors. He that have an ear, let him hear what the scripture has said.
found Get him Be found Get Can we say that one more time? Found. When he shall come With trumpet. With trumpet. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you gotta just say woo. And sometimes you gotta mourn. Let's say mmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta mourn sometimes.
the Lord for his goodness unto us. We're able to be in the house of God one more Lord's day to praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Good to see you this morning on this chilly Sunday in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fourth Sunday. The Lord has blessed us to come together and we are here to bless his holy name. Thank God for his grace extended. That's the only reason we are here today. It's because of the grace of God. None of us deserves to be here. 
Hallelujah. God extended his grace, smiled upon us this morning, and told us to live on. Hallelujah. And we thank him for that great privilege in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have our announcements at this time. I ask that you would please uh, listen to the announcements that are being read. We announce the sorrow, the passing of uh, Gary Doctor Jr., uh, the grandson of our sister Cora Doctor. Hallelujah, Cora Doctor Brown. Uh, she's a member of our usher board, longtime faithful member of the church, and serving with the ushers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Her son passed away on. Friday, Thursday it was, he passed away. We ask that you pray for Sister Doctor and for the family. We don't have any information relative to the funeral yet. As soon as we get the information, it will be in the church office. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, but pray for her in the name of Jesus. For God's comfort and help at this difficult time. And uh, we have with us today for our afternoon service today, former assistant pastor here at Greater Wifey's Temple, pastor at the Christ Temple Church, and the former presiding apostle for a number of years uh, with the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, our faithful Apostle James I. Clark, Jr. He will be in service today at 2 p.m. Uh, as a guest speaker, special guest speaker, for the Global Missions Department, headed by... Uh, Elder Chris, Samuel Chris, District Elder Samuel Chris. So we ask that you might uh, stay with us a little while after a service. Uh, and those who are going to be staying for a little while, it indicates that uh, there will be a light reception in the social hall for those who are staying after service, not just for those who want to light something to go on out in the street, okay? But if you're going to be here for the afternoon service, we ask that you might uh, just enjoy a little fellowship uh, snack of some kind uh, with uh, the rest of your brothers and sisters. Apostle James I. Clark Jr. will be here to speaker. Uh, we always enjoy his ministry in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that you would uh, pray for him and pray certainly for M Mother Clark, his wife, who has been ill for a while as he comes to minister this afternoon for the Global Missions Department in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Missionary Department invites all missionaries uh, to bring all of their items for the We Love Our Community program to be, bring them and put them in the donation bin which is located in the back of the church after morning service. The missionaries know what that is all around. Uh, but they're going to have a We Love Our Community program and they have a donation bin that you might bring things that you are uh, expected to bring that uh, you committed yourselves to. And the next meeting of the missionaries will be on Tuesday, September the 26th at 7 o'clock uh, via teleconference. For more information, please see Sister Janice Johnson, missionary president in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, by way of announcement, the Women's Council invites you to attend their afternoon service on Sunday, October the 8th. The Women's Council invites you to attend their service on the Sunday, October the 8th, following morning service. That's around the two o'clock hour. Please wear your Women's Council attire. That'll be the white suit with purple accessories and a red flower. Women's Council service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on October the 8th. All missionaries are invited. I mean, all women are invited. All women of our church are part of the Women's Council, whether you're a missionary or some other office you hold. All women belong to the Women's Council of Greater Refuge Temple. And you're asked to be in support of the service on October the 8th in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ at 2 p.m. And then the International Women's Council will be held October the 18th through uh, the 22nd in Columbus, Ohio. Missionary 
rather the Women's Council, including missionaries, will be having their uh, international meeting on the, the 18th of October through the 22nd. It'll be held in Columbus, Ohio. For more information related to the conference, uh, see Sister Joan McCafferty, who is our Women's Council President in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And right after morning service, the uh, Women's Council will be accepting their annual pack a piece donation drive. Items uh, can be given downstairs in the social hall in the room labeled the nursery. For more details, please, Sister McCafferty, who will be down there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Those are our announcements in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Bless you. As we move forward in our service, we're going to, at this time, prepare to receive our offering. Each and every one is asked to give in support of the work of the Lord. Everyone is encouraged to give in their tithes and their offerings to bless the work of the Lord in its continuance here at Greater Refuge Temple in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And we all know that. We practice that. Giving in the Lord has blessed us to keep on giving. Uh, the ushers have envelopes. If you haven't uh, prepared your offering yet, uh, place your tithes and offerings therein and give in support of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ here through Greater Refuge Temple. Giving is an act of worship. We worship through giving at this time. So prepare to give in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, each and every one. Take your offerings in your hands. And to those who are worshiping with us by your live stream, you certainly are encouraged to give to bless the work of the Lord. Uh, there are three ways of giving. They are on the screen. Three ways of giving. You may give electronically via Givelify in the name of Jesus. And, of course, those who have been giving traditionally have done so generally through um, sending your donations to Greater Refuge Temple, located at 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, address one, and the zip code 10027. That is, send all donations to Greater Refuge Temple here at 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. And the Lord will bless you real good. And if there's anyone in the neighborhood, Monday through Friday is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning until about 4 in the afternoon, and you'd like to give, uh, security will be here to uh, receive your uh, offering and place it in a, a locked, secure box here in the church if you can't make it on a Sunday. But please give. Please bless the Lord. It's work as the Lord has blessed you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in tithes and in offering. So we at this time are going to give in thanksgiving to God for his blessing us to have to give in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So would you take your offerings out? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we prepare to give, giving unto the Lord through his church here at Greater Refuge Temple. We'll bow our heads in prayer and uh, consecration of our offering. Oh, dear God, we come before you with thanksgiving. We thank you for your blessing us to be able to be here on this day. And also thank you for, Lord God, the ability to be able to give back to you and to your work, that tenth, that tithe, and an offering to bless thy name. Oh, bless each and every one who is giving. Bless the gift. And Lord, bless the giver. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And let God's children say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Our shoes are serving.
you for giving. May the Lord bless you in your support of his work here at Refuge Temple. Thank all of you for giving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for You're going to be bothered more than that if you don't stop that noise. Don't disrupt the service, okay? We're glad to have with us today Director of Music. Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson. Welcome back to Refuge Temple. We missed you, and your contribution here is certainly invaluable. We appreciate all of the music department people, all of you who sing Sunday after Sunday. And the young man that's assisting Dr. Johnson, uh, Brother David. Thank you for your service. Good to see you again also, Annette, and Takita, and everybody. I want to start calling names. Some of the names uh, pass by and, and they go on by. <laughs> Good to see you all. May the Lord bless you. They've been singing every Sunday. They have the music department, the two A and B praise teams. We are moving by the Lord's help as soon as possible to get back a larger um, singing group. We call it a choir again. We're working on that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the time comes, the announcement will be made and those who are going to be participants may prepare themselves to return to full active duty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But thank you for your support and for our drummers and for uh, Titus and others and guitarists. And there is Kush. And nobody can beat those drums like Kush. Brother Kushaya. Thank you for, and others who support who might not be here right now. I want to thank God for all of Refuge Temple. You have been simply wonderful. I thank God for the privilege to be a member of this church. The Lord blessed I came here 63 years ago. I was a little guy then, a young fellow then, and the Lord blessed, and I have not joined any other church. It's the only church I really have ever joined and belonged to. But I thank God. Uh, it's here where I found the Lord through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord has been good to me. I have not been perfect, but the Lord has been good. He has forgiven me over and over again. As the song says, how many times? Did he my burdens bear? When I reach those pearly gates, thank God, I believe you'll let me in. You want to enter the pearly gates at the time of the rapture of the church, you'll continue in your service to Refuge Temple. God has been good in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank each and every one of you for your prayers and for your support in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. As we continue in worship under God, We'll have our final selection by our praise team. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., who will bring us the word of God, our praise team. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Jennifer. I want to thank you so very much for your prayers. And I'm going to ask you to please don't stop praying. I have to go into the hospital. Um, for a procedure for my heart in um, October. And I'm, I've, I've told uh, my bishops already, it, it's um, kind of daunting to me because I'm a walking miracle. A lot of you don't know. I have five stents in my heart. And the doctor had told me when, when I had the first one that my foot was one foot on the earth and my other, other part of my body was in the grave because I sing so hard and I was putting so much stress and pressure on my heart that she really didn't expect me to live, but God. 
but God. And the first one was put in in 19, 1995. And that was the time that the doctor gave me up to die. But it's 2023. And I got five. So the doctors don't know what's going to happen when they get me on the table because they said because of the stress that I've been under and going through that I've put so much pressure and stress on my heart that they want to make sure that there's no more blockages. And whatever they see when they get on the, uh, do the exploratory, they're going to handle it then. So you all, I'm asking you to please don't stop praying for Jennifer. Amen. Because I want to be here to sing some more for God. I'm alive because I feel that there's more. So I thank you again. Like I said, I thank God for my, my mother in Zion, Mother Wright, who keeps up with me. She's my big sister. And my little brother, Bishop Wilkins. And of course, for my pastor and so many other of you that love me so dearly and pray for me. But those who don't know me, even the people that are not even members of this church, when you kneel down to pray, just call Jennifer. That God will give me the grace and strength to bring me through this procedure. In Jesus' name. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I believe there's a blessing coming my way. Come on, say it like you mean it. I believe there's a blessing coming my way. Can you clap your hands? Let's have a little church here. Sister Jennifer, we believe there's a blessing on the way. Come on, clap your hands. Do me a favor. You've been sitting there for a while. Come on, stand on your feet. Clap your hands in here. Come on, praise team, let's go. There's a blessing, There's a blessing from, the Lord. from the Lord. There's a blessing. There's a blessing. If, you hold on, if you hold on, there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. It's, coming it's coming soon. There's a blessing. There's a, blessing. a blessing. A blessing for you. Say, there's a blessing from the Lord. There's a blessing. If you hold on, there's a breakthrough. It's coming soon. There's a blessing. A blessing for you. Clap your hands here. Listen. I'm a witness. He'll make a way. When it seems there is no way. The Lord, he promised. His word is true. There's a blessing. A blessing for you. There's, there's a blessing from the Lord. There's a blessing. Look at your name and say, if you hold if you on, hold there's on, a breakthrough. breakthrough. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. There's a blessing. A blessing for Clap you. Clap your hands. I'm a witness. He'll make a way. When it seems there is no way, the Lord, he promised, and his word is true. There's a blessing. A blessing for you. There's, there's a blessing. If you hold on, there's a breakthrough. It's coming soon. There's a blessing. A blessing for you. Say, hold out. Come on, clap your hands. All you've got to do is hold on. Say, hold out. Just hold on. Come on, one more time. Say, hold out. Your blessing is on the way. Hold out. If you believe it, you just got to. And just hold on. Come on, clap your hands here. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Talk about your breakthrough. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Your blessing is on the way. It's coming soon. 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 It's coming soon.
coming soon. Just hold.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, God, first of all, to say thank you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, God, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. God, we thank you today because it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed, because your compassion they fail not and are new every morning. And great is God's faithfulness towards us. And God, we thank you, God, for all. Lord God, those who have gathered here under the sound of my voice to worship and to magnify, to lift up and to exalt your holy name. Now, God, we ask that you would please forgive us for our sins, anything we may have said or did or thought that was not pleasing in your sight, God. We ask that you would forgive us and count us worthy to escape and make us better. God, we ask now that you would touch us and strengthen us. Lord God, that you would touch these, your people. Lord God, if there are many sick among us, we ask that you would heal by your power and by your grace. God, those who need a miracle. God, we touch and agree right now for Dr. McCarroll Johnson, God. Her request was made known. Lord God, we claim complete healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I want somebody to say in the name of Jesus. We claim complete healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask now, Lord God, that you would let your word go forth like a mighty hammer that would destroy and break up all foul ground. God, we ask if there's anything that's not like you, anything that would hinder the preacher or the hearer, God, we ask now that you would touch us now. Speak a word of life, a word of victory, a word of deliverance to these your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, give God the best praise you have. God bless you. We certainly do praise and thank God for the Spirit of God that is here with us on today. We praise and thank God for each and every one of you, our Father's children, who thought it not robbery to come out in the rain. Amen. You know, we've gotten so used to, amen, good weather that sometimes we don't, amen, come out when the weather doesn't look the way we want it to look. Amen. But it never stopped us from going to the party when it was raining. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, you know, didn't stop you from going to the casino. Didn't stop you from going down to the number hole. Put in your number, y'all don't know. This new generation don't know nothing about the number hole. 
Yes, but we, amen, celebrate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David said it best. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and we praise and thank God for you being with us on today. Amen. We do honor our pastor, amen, uh, Bishop Wright. We praise and thank God for him. And for Mother Wright, amen. And certainly we honor my wife, Sarah, to our missionary president, uh, Mother Johnson, and to our district elder, amen, uh, Chris, and to all the elders and ministers and the clergy alike, we praise and thank God for you. Amen. To our deacons and all the people of God, we say praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so we have a second service that is happening today. And there's a reception for those of you who will stay. Uh, and the service starts at 2 o'clock. So uh, we need to hit it and quit it on this morning. Amen. And so we ask for your prayers uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So go with us to Exodus chapter number 14. And also we're going to look at Exodus chapter 15. I'm not going to do a whole lot of this, but just a little bit. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights, but when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. Any witnesses of that? I won't, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I could hardly see the road. I've asked the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. <laughs> Although these weary eyes, they can't see. So instead of complaining, I'll say, thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. Listen, God has been good to me. Any witnesses in the house? He, he's been good to me. More than this old world could ever be. He's been good. He's been good. So good to me. He draws my tears away. Turn my darkness into day. So listen, instead of complaining, just cry out, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. God, God has been good to me. He, he's been good to me. More than this world could ever be. God's been good. God's been good. God's been good to me. Yes. He draws my tears.
years away. Hallelujah. I said he dried my tears away. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He dries all of my tears away. When you can't sleep at night, he'll dry all your tears away. Turn your darkness into day. So I'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. I could, but I won't. Some say I should, but I won't. I won't complain. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I won't complain. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 14, beginning at verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and uh, they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto, uh, unto the Lord, and said unto, them, and said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us? Carry us forth out of Egypt. Is it not this word that uh, we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse number 13. And Moses said unto the uh, people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which I will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore cry unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. 
also go to Exodus chapter number 15. Beginning at verse number one, it reads, on this wise, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed glorious. The horse and his rider have he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an inhabitation, my father's God. I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. I want to use for thought on this morning, I won't complain. I won't complain. Like use for a subtopic, if you will, on this morning, why complain when you can praise? This whole idea of complaining uh, is something that I'm sure we all know about. Um, can we really be honest and take off our bit of our sophisticated face? You know, there are some folks who seem to have made a profession out of complaining. I know you can't say anything because they may be sitting next to you, but uh, there are some folks, no matter what they say, if you ask them how they're doing, the first thing they do is start with a list of complaints. Almost you want to ask them, did anything go right today? Perhaps that's not your experience. Perhaps your experience is you're having a good day. And you see an individual and you go the other way because you know if you get caught into their hands, they're going to bring you down to where they are. Let me give you one more analogy. Perhaps you're at home and the phone rings and you look at the caller ID and you see who's calling. And you make up in your mind, not today, devil. You're not going to steal my joy today. I, I know you have to act like you've never had moments like that, but I must admit that there have been times, there have been moments where I've pressed the ignore button to protect my spirit. This whole idea of complaining, amen, uh, uh, in the Greek literally means one who is discontented with life. That, that is the actual, amen, uh, uh, translation of it. it it's, it's the same word that you see in the King James Version, amen, that uh, is used uh, throughout the King James Version, uh, the word grumble. Uh, this, this same word complaining and grumbling, amen, are likened to each other. It's a, uh, more of an a American standard word that we use, but from a biblical perspective, it's more grumbling. Man, it is this grumbling, complaining, amen, that the enemy wants us to get caught into. And if we're not careful, we can become, amen, get uh, caught in a cycle of grumbling and complaining. We just simply grumble and complain about everything. Not realizing that God has been good to us. We wake up in the morning sometime grumbling and complaining. Get up out of the bed. Well, how you doing this morning? Oh, 
my knees hurt. Oh, my neck hurt. Oh, my eye hurt. Oh, my hand is hurting. Not realizing that there are people who would love to be in your position. Man, that there are people who are, amen, going through the worst times of their lives. But yet, chosen not to complain. This, this whole idea of complaining, uh, uh, we have to put it in proper perspective because, amen, God has given us fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter number 5, amen, and in those two verses, 22 and 23, uh, not one of them, amen, mentions complaining. As a matter of fact, amen, uh, they almost contradict or do contradict this whole idea of continuous complaining. We've got to be careful that we don't become too attached to this because if we're not careful, we will find ourselves in a destructive path of complaining. For, amen, uh, the Christian life, we must understand that God has not called us to grumble and complain. We see the first, amen, amount of complainings uh, throughout the scriptures. Amen, we see uh, complaining beginning in the book of Genesis. You remember when Adam fell uh, and the Lord said to Adam, Adam, where art thou? And he complained to God. It wasn't me. It was that woman you gave me. You know, deflecting uh, from his own responsibility. This, this idea of complaining helps us to really understand and put our lives as children of God in proper perspective. And by God's grace, from a biblical perspective, I want to help you on this morning to understand that it's the small foxes that destroy the vine. The things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we allow to creep into our spirits that have the potential to tear away at us. Our scripture text brings us to the book of Exodus. Uh, there are many uh, uh, outlooks on uh, the book of Exodus. There are many commentaries on the book of Exodus uh, and, and outlines of the book of Exodus, but but this morning for our text, I, I, I liked a, a, a gentleman by the name of Victor Hamilton, a man who, who is an uh, Old Testament theologian, modern Old Testament theologian, but he, he, he does a really good job of giving a good outline of the book of Exodus. And, and uh, he begins to start talking about uh, from uh, uh, Exodus chapter 1 through 11, talking about the distress of the children of Israel. You remember the children of Israel. You remember Moses. Man, I won't dive too much into it, but uh, the Lord uh, uh, allowed Moses to be born during a very difficult time because uh, there was a king that rose that did not know Joseph and all that Joseph had done. Didn't understand that uh, the children of Israel were God's chosen people. And because they were God's chosen people, uh, you have to be careful how you handle God's chosen people. <laughs> Beloved God, that, that, that speaks to you and I today because you've been called. You've been chosen. That's why the word of God declares, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Any anointed folks in the house on this morning? The, 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 the Bible declares that you're better off tying a millstone around your neck and being cast in the midst of the sea than to mess with one of God's little ones. You know that, uh, you know, to properly exegete that text, you know, it's talking about those young in Christ, those who are babes in Christ, Amen. Uh, uh, but, but, but the concept still remains. You know, we, 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 when, when you belong to God, there's nothing that the devil can do to you. 
Uh, you, you, you don't believe me? Well, if that scripture wasn't sufficient enough for you, what about this one? No weapon. Uh, that, that is formed against you. Whew. Doesn't mean that it won't come, but it will not prosper. Uh, I, I, that's a word for someone on this morning who's getting ready to go back to a hectic week at work. God told me to tell you it won't work. Uh, I dare you just to testify to let, to let somebody know it won't work. Uh, it, 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 it won't work. You know, when God has placed an anointing on your life, nothing that the devil can do can stop a child of God. And so our scripture text tells us, amen, in the book of Exodus, Moses is born. Pharaoh makes a decree that he needs to stop the children of Israel because... Man, uh, if he didn't, they were growing at such rapid numbers that they would, uh, amen, eventually overtake them. You need to be uh, 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 mindful of this. In, in, in the book of Genesis, we see the infertility of Abraham and Sarah. And because of prophecy, now we see the super fertility of those same people. Isn't it amazing how God turns things around? That, that, that's, that, that's why you've got to be careful of judging people on today's standards. Because what I look like today, I won't look like tomorrow. I, I, I heard one songwriter said, it won't always be like this. You, you, you've You've got to understand that just because you may be down and out today, God has a way of turning things around. Well, if you want to pull from the, uh, from, uh, the New Testament, let's go to Romans chapter number 8, verse number 28. It says, and we know that all things are working together for our good. The Bible declares, amen, here, uh, uh, Pharaoh decides the only way to get rid of them is to uh, kill off this nation. And so he told the midwives, you remember the midwives? Uh, the scriptures uh, identified the midwives, Sifra and Pua, amen, uh, amen, uh, these two, Women, he said, now, when they get on the birthing stool, I want you to uh, kill them while they're on the birthing stool. But the Bible says that these two women love God. Amen. Let me tell you, God knows how to set things up for you. That's why, that, 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 that's why you don't need to worry, because God is always behind the curtain pulling the strings. I like to refer to him as the great puppet master. You know, he's, 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 he's pulling things around for our good. And so Pharaoh had a plan, but God had a better plan. The Bible says, amen, that they love the Lord. God raised up these two women. The Bible says, amen, that Pharaoh got mad with them and said, why did you do this? You know, they had to make up a story. Uh, man, they said, well, you know, these Hebrew women are different from the Egyptian women. You know, they get on the birthing stool and pop, there goes the baby. <laughs> man, and they said, uh, uh, they, they, they're vigorous in their, amen, child birthing. Bible declares, amen, that uh, uh, Moses is born in the midst of this. Moses' mother puts him, amen, into the river. So that Moses would live and Moses is brought to the king's palace through the king's daughter, through Pharaoh's daughter. You know the story. And once he gets into, amen, him into the palace, he's raised with the fineries of life. Isn't it amazing how God sets things up? When God has a call on your life. God will take someone, amen, that the people said would never be anything and put you in places that you never thought you would be. 
Who would have ever thought that a person that came out of your family, a person that came out of your neighborhood, that came out of your house, all of your brothers and sisters are a mess. All raised in the same house. But God put his hands on you and anointed you and filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And look at what God has done in your life. God has made you the head and not the tail. The Bible declares, amen, that you know the story. Eventually, Moses, amen, sees one of the uh, uh, Egyptians uh, uh, beating on one of uh, 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 the Israelites, and he kills that person. He flees. He's now in Jethro's house. He's now doing well. He escapes to Midian. And while he's there, Bible says, amen, that he takes a wife, but the Lord calls Moses out. When the Lord calls Moses out, he tells Moses, Moses, I've got a work for you to do. Let me explain something to you. God is not concerned about your comfortability in him. I knew I wasn't going to get any amens. But you need to be clear that it is not God's plan for you to be comfortable. Let me tell you something. People who are comfortable in God, the enemy doesn't fight them. People who are comfortable and, amen, don't make any waves, just sit in a seat of complacency. The enemy is not interested in you. The enemy is interested in people who've got some fire in their belly. That's willing to take their tracks and go down the 42nd Street and preach and teach and share and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, the enemy is not stunning you sitting in that seat. The enemy is after those who've got a fire in their belly. Who are willing to do something for God. God called Moses. God tells Moses. He says to Moses, Moses, you go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I want you to declare amen to uh, uh, Pharaoh. I want you to let my people go. Moses' amen response to this was, who am I? That I should be the one to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You know, you know the story, and amen for time's sake, I won't go into all of it. But, 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 but it's important to understand, if you know this from the text, God never answered Moses about who he was. You know, some of us would want God to say, well, you're, you know, you're, you're great. You're wonderful. No, no, he didn't say that. He said, you go and tell him that I am. That I am. I am he who will bring you out. I am the deliverer. I am the redeemer. I am, amen, uh, 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 the Lord thou God. I will take care of my people. I will lead them into the promised land. The Bible declares, amen, that it was Moses. Now God brings out of obscurity to the children of Israel. You know the story, amen, God uses plagues to warn Pharaoh. To let my people go. Let me tell you something. God will bankrupt heaven for you and I. God loves you so much that God, amen, will step, amen, uh, off of his throne. To come down to see about you and I. God loves you so much that God is not going to let the enemy back you up against the corner. Amen. God loves you so much. That there's no devil in hell that can stop you. There's no place that the enemy can put you that God won't come to see about you. Amen. The word of God declares even if you make your bed in hell, God will be right there with you. And so the objective here is the idea is that God wants them to have a deeper relationship with him. 
And so throughout the book of Exodus, you will see this common phrase that they will know me. That they will know me. You see it, amen, some 12 times in this book. Man, you see it uh, in uh, chapter number 6, verse number 7. You'll find it. You'll find it, amen, in chapter number 5, verse number 2. Chapter number 7, verse number 5. Chapter number 7, verse number 17. Chapter number 8, verse number 10. Chapter number 8, verse number 22. Chapter number 9, verse number 14. Chapter number 9, verse number 29. Chapter number 10, verse number 2. Chapter number 11, verse number 7. Chapter number 4, uh, 14. Chapter number, uh, verse number 4. Chapter number 14, verse number 18. All of them state the same thing. That they will know me. So, beloved of God, First thing that we need to establish in this whole idea of not complaining is that God takes us through what he takes us through so that we can know him better. We, we, we used to sing a song that said, I want to know him better because he died for me. I want to know him better because he set me free. I want to know him better as the day go by. I want to love him better by and by or something like that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, but, but, but the idea is that we want to know God. And you won't know God from a distance. The only way you're going to know God is an intimate relationship with him. The only way you're going to know God is to go through trials and tribulations. Amen. And, 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 and most of us look at the text, and when we look at the text, the first thing that we understand or the first thing that we think of is, well, why does Pharaoh have to know God? Well, this isn't just about Pharaoh knowing God. You know, Pharaoh believed in, or during this time, they believed in what is called a pantheon of gods. Uh, uh, a whole slew of different gods, a god of the sun, a god of the moon, a god of the sea, a god of the blood, a god of the water, a god of... They believed in all of these other gods, a god of fertility. God said, I'm god of all gods. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Oh, beloved of God, perhaps some of the things that God takes us through is so that we will know that he is God. Not know him because of the testimony service and what someone else shared, but I know him for myself. Perhaps God takes us through the trials and the troubles of life so that you will be able to stand up and testify and give your own testimony and say, he brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praises. Hallelujah. It is through this the children of Israel find themselves in a pickle because now they are confronted with Pharaoh. The Bible says, amen, that it was the last plague plague of the firstborn that God said uh, I'm going to take all the firstborn but I want you to get the blood of a lamb and I want you to put it on the doorpost and when I see the blood I will pass over you well, I'm so happy on this morning that we don't have to slay the lamb anymore. We don't have to put any blood on the door. Someone has taken the place of the lamb. It is Jesus. I didn't hear anybody on this morning. I said it's Jesus. The bright and morning star, Jesus. The rose of Sharon, Jesus. The lily of the valley, Jesus. The bomb in Gilead, Jesus. He is the great 
I am. The Bible declares, amen, that it was God himself who stood in front of the doorpost and said the death could not come this way. Meanwhile, amen, the children of Israel don't understand all that God is doing. But they're just feeling the pain and the hurt and the, the trouble of the trial. And I want to talk to someone today that is in the middle of a trial, that's in the middle of trouble, and you don't understand what God is doing. You don't understand that God is trying to do something on your behalf, but the meanwhile, all you see is the trouble. Well, beloved of God, the first thing to understand is trouble don't last always. That God knows how to bring his people out. I want to give you very quickly five challenges of Complaining. Number one, uh, complaining, number one, uh, uh, goes against the plan and will of God. Man, it not only goes against the plan of God, but it is also contagious. Uh, you, you, you've got to be careful. Amen. Who you put yourself around. Look at verse number 11. Amen. In chapter number 14, it says, And amen, they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves uh, in Egypt that ye have taken us away to die in this wilderness? That word they is also translated, uh, All the people lifted their voices. Amen. It was united. You know, one person starts complaining, another person starts complaining. You've got to be careful who you put yourself around because complaining is contagious. You ever found yourself complaining about stuff and you didn't even know how you got there? You ain't never had no experience with it. You don't even know what you're complaining about. Man, someone sent a letter to me the, uh, that someone had sent to them, amen, and asked me what I thought about it and they was complaining about something Amen. And I said to them, well, have they uh, seen what you did? Or they said, no, they've never seen it. I said, well, have they experienced it? I mean, have you told them? And no, they not. So I said, well, what is the letter about if they've never seen it? Never experienced it? How can you complain about something that you don't know nothing about? It's the same thing about our troubles. You don't know enough to complain about your troubles. You don't know what God is doing to talk too much about your troubles. You've got to do like the old saints used to say, hallelujah anyhow. Never let your troubles get you down. When that problem comes your way, hold your head up high and say, hallelujah anyhow. Man, number two, amen, complaining gets you nowhere. Look at verse number 12. Didn't we tell you that this uh, that this would happen while we were in Egypt, we said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves in Egypt. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness from the New Living Translation. Man, complaining doesn't get you anywhere. You know, it's like a rocking chair. You, you rock in a rocking chair. It feels good but doesn't get you anywhere. And that's what complaining does. Complaining has a way, glory be to God, amen, to give you something to do, but it doesn't take you anywhere. Number, number three, complaining, amen, often expresses fear. You know, there's a language behind things. So you have to listen to what people say very wisely. You know, uh, recently I got a certification in counseling because I thought I needed it, amen, in Christian counseling. So I, I went and got a certification in that to kind of help me understand things a little better. And one of the first things that they teach you in, certain, in Christian counseling is that you've got to be able to hear what people are saying. You, 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 you've got to understand the language behind the language. And oftentimes, when people are complaining, they're expressing something else. I hope you're listening to me on this morning. 
Listen, listen to this. Amen. Uh, uh, verse number 13. But Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Amen. You know, uh, uh, they, they, they were expressing their own fear. You know, fear is something else. You know, fear is something, especially for men. You know, one of the things that I've learned uh, is, is, is that men oftentimes express fear out of anger. You know, you know, when you're afraid of something, I, 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 I know y'all want me to do something a little different. We'll get there, I promise. You just let me work with me a little while. Amen. You know, you know, you know fear uh, uh, oftentimes is hid in anger. You know, when you get angry about something, uh, when you're afraid of, uh, for most men, especially for men, we express it in anger. You know, you, 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 the kids came in late. Uh, you, you don't want to say, I was afraid that something happened to you. So you get upset. You get angry. The Bible says, amen, in verse number 13, uh, Moses says to them, uh, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Man, don't, 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 don't just sit around complaining. You don't have to be afraid when God is on your side. Why? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. And if God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, then that means that fear comes from someplace else. There's only two forces, good and evil. You've heard me say this before. And if it didn't come from God, then that means it came from something else. If it didn't come from God and there's only two forces, then that means that the enemy has sent it. That's why, amen, the psalmist said, the Lord is my light. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I've come to tell you when God has a plan for your life, you don't have to be afraid of what the enemy will do to you. Because if God be for you, who can be the, against you? Amen. Complaining oftentimes expresses a lack of faith. Listen, in verse number 14, the Lord said to them, I will fight for you. Had to calm them down. Let them know that God said, I'm going to fight for you. You don't have to be afraid. I will fight for you. I've come to declare to you today, you don't need to complain about your troubles. You can tell your troubles, amen, to get in the back seat because God is fighting for you. Listen, in verse number 15, amen, complaining, uh, finally complaining, amen, also hinders our growth and prolongs the process. Man, it, 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 it hinders our growth and prolongs the process. Listen, amen, to verse number 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Why crieth thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. I want you to know that you don't have to keep sitting in the same place just complaining. Amen. The Bible declares faith without works is dead and the enemy would love to have you sit around and complain. Too many of us have found ourselves in a place of complacency. All we do is sit around and complain. The devil has you just where he wants you. Has you in a place, amen, where uh, uh, people are afraid to even have a conversation with you because the conversation has the tendency to turn negative. The Bible declares that the children of Israel said, why did you bring us here? Amen. In other words, questioning not just Moses, but God. Because Moses was God's man. Amen. The Bible declares, amen, that when they questioned Moses, Moses went to God. I've come to inform you today that if you have questions about anything, the Bible declares that he that lacks wisdom can ask it of God. Man, and you've got to make up in your mind that I will not spend the rest of my life sitting on the sidelines complaining about life. But I need to be clear that God has a better plan for me. The Bible says, amen, that they made up in their minds, uh, amen, that this was going to be the end. But what they did not understand is that God had a bigger plan in place. I wish you would just tell somebody who's sitting next to you, amen, let them know that God has a bigger plan. Yes, 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 God, 
God has a bigger plan. God has a bigger plan. We spend so much time complaining about things. Amen. Even, uh, 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 you know, the children of Israel is one example, but you could also look in the book of Kings, Second Kings, amen, chapter number five. Uh, you remember uh, uh, Naaman, amen, who was, uh, 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 had leprosy. And you remember when Naaman was there and had leprosy, uh, he went to the man of God and asked the man of God for healing. Man of God said, well, listen, I'll tell you, go and, uh, 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 go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. And he got up tight and said, what in the world? The man of God didn't even come to the door to greet me. And I'm, now I got an attitude uh, and started complaining and complaining and complaining. And one of his servants said, listen, if he would have asked you to do a hard thing, you would have did it. Stop complaining and go and dip in the Jordan the seven times. The man Naaman did what the man of God told him to do and he was healed instantly. The question I have for you on this morning is why don't you listen to the voice of God and stop complaining? When are you going to stop complaining and say, God, I'm yours? Whatever it is you have for me to do, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. God, I'm willing to stand up and be counted. The Bible declares, amen, they got an attitude with Moses. And said, Moses, amen, uh, uh, we're here and, and, and now it seems like we're going to die in the middle of uh, uh, this uh, 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 wilderness here. Amen. But Moses had a word from God. And I've come to speak to someone on this morning who has a word from God. Well, if you don't have a word from God, I have a word for you on this morning. God told me to tell somebody on this morning that everything is going to be all right. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. You don't have to continue walking around complaining and murmuring and grumbling about what you don't understand. Amen. You remember Job's friends who murmured and complained trying to tell Job that he had done wrong. And the Bible says that Job made up in his mind, though he slay me. Uh, yes, Lord. Yet will I trust him. I've come to talk to someone on this morning who's been trapped in uh, uh, the spirit of complaining and complaining and complaining and God wants you to know that God has a bigger plan for your life. God told the children of Israel, amen, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, that, 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 that's what I come to tell you on this morning. Uh, you don't have to complain. Uh, you don't have to murmur. Uh, you don't have to sit around and have a pity party. Uh, just stand still. Uh, wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. Uh, and God will uh, strengthen your heart. Uh, you don't have to stand around complaining uh, and believing that God uh, has forgotten about you. Uh, God has not forgotten about you. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, well, uh, if you remember, uh, even in the book of John, uh, chapter number 11, uh, when Lazarus uh, was sick uh, and Lazarus, uh, her sister sent for Jesus uh, and they were waiting and waiting uh, and Lazarus died uh, and Martha said, uh, Jesus, if you would have been here, here comes the complaining, my brother would not have died. Lord have mercy. But Jesus said, show me where you laid him down. In other words, show me where you stop believing. Stop complaining. Hallelujah. And put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes, Lord. The Bible declares that Martha said, wait a minute, Jesus. I don't want to get my hopes up high he said I know that he will rise again in the resurrection Jesus said look at me gal I am the resurrection 
I wish I could preach it like I feel it. I am the resurrection and I am the life. I come to tell you on today, open up your perspective. What you're looking at today, what you're going through today, God is behind the scenes pulling the strings on your behalf. Would you just testify to somebody and let them know he's pulling some strings on your behalf? Tell somebody else he's pulling some strings on your behalf. Stop looking so mean. Stop looking so angry and realize that God is on your side. And if God is on your side, there's no devil in hell that can stop you because God is on your side. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring and change your attitude and realize that you can praise God even in the midst of trouble. I still have a praise. Yes, Lord. The Bible declares in chapter number 15 that the situation changes. That God kills the children of Israel. Excuse me, kills the Egyptians. Lord have mercy. In the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And when he kills them in the Red Sea, in verse chapter number 15, the Bible declares that they begin to dance and they sang a song of the deliverance. But I've come to tell you on this morning, don't wait until the battle is over to get your praise on. But praise him now. Praise him. Stop complaining and open up your mouth and say, God, I don't understand it, but I'm not going to complain. I'm going to stay right here and realize that you're working things out for my good. And even though I may have to cry, even though I may have to moan, even though life may be difficult, but for God I live and for God I die. Somebody say, yeah, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible declares, the Bible declares, amen, that God delivers the children of Israel out of the hand of the enemy. But they complained against Moses. I want you to understand something. Not complaining is not easy. Because in chapter number 15, they praise God in a song of deliverance. But in chapter number 16 and chapter number 17, they pick up complaining once again. They complained about the manna. First, they complained that they were hungry. Then God gives them manna from heaven. God was the chef. And they still complained about what God had given them. Complaining is contagious and it rips away at the core of the child of God. Look at chapter number 15. As long as they were praising God, they could not complain. But the moment they stopped praising God, they picked up complaining again. What are you saying, Bishop Wilkins? You can't praise God and complain at the same time. Some of you, that's all you do is complain. Can we have a serious conversation if you don't mind? You know, that's all you do is complain. And it's killing your purpose. It's killing your plan. It's killing what God wants to do in your life because you won't stop complaining. The children of Israel complained and complained and complained. Even once God delivered them, they picked it back up again. 
and said we were better off as slaves in chapter number 16. At least we had full pots. We had something to eat. We had as much food as we wanted. Here it is, but you were enslaved and God delivered you. And you pick up complaining again. God wants to do awesome things in your life. But he can't do what he wants to do in your life when you're complaining about everything. Some of you say, well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the trouble I'm going through. I promise you, beloved of God, if you stop complaining, you will be able to see God's hands of mercy all over your life. I'm done. One of the scriptures I wanted to bring to you, and just don't have the time to do it, is if you look at Galatians chapter number five, you look at, begin to look at the works of the flesh and look at the fruit of the spirit. You're given five things in the fruit of the spirit, five or so things in the fruit of the spirit. But the work of the flesh has a number of things, somewhere around 16, I think, think, different things, 17 different things that are the work of the flesh. So easy to walk in your flesh. It's so easy to be given to the things of the flesh as opposed to the things of God. And if you look at complaining, complaining lines up with the works of the flesh. Don't be trapped in the works of the flesh. Don't allow the enemy to get you to a place where you're complaining. Now, some of you today, this is going to be my only advice to you, and I'm going to leave you alone. You're going to get a call after service. You're going to get a call this evening. Perhaps some of you will get a call tomorrow. I dare you, because we learned today that complaining is contagious. I dare you, when that person calls to complain, I dare you, very nicely, very lovingly, say, we're not going to have any complaining today. God's been too good to us. God's been too merciful to us. Tell me about what God has done in your life. I promise you, if you do it, you'll see God shifting the atmosphere in your life. Some of you are those who complain. Well, when you get ready to pick up the phone, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Perhaps instead of talking on the phone, you should get on your knees and talk to God. And say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? When they come to your cubicle tomorrow at work, hear them out and begin to pray. You know, one of the things that I've done, I'm done, amen, but one of the things that I've done, and, I've, I've, and, it, and it really does work, try it, try it, try it. When someone comes to complain, I listen, I hear everything that they have to say, and then I say, can I pray for you? If you don't dig in the garbage with them, they will either take it someplace else or use you as a source of encouragement and a source of strength as a, instead of a place to dump their garbage. Prayer changes things. As long as the children of Israel were in worship, they were not complaining. But the minute they got out of worship, they found themselves in continuous complaining. We should continuously worship God and watch what God does in our lives. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you here this morning? We've got to run. Are you here this morning? You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Perhaps you have been stricken and it seems as if there's so many things that are negative that are going on in your life and perhaps you, yourself, have found yourself complaining about things that only God can fix only God can change. 
I dare you to come. I dare you to come right now. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Make up in your mind that for God I live and for God I die. I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ right now. Come, come. Man, woman, boy, or girl, make up in your mind. Perhaps you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Leave from where you are and come to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to be baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to have a positive life is to have a life that is dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. Make up in your mind that I want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit and God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized today. Let the minister know I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to find a new place in Jesus. I want to stop complaining. I don't want to be so negative. I don't want to be on the brink of a miracle, on the brink of God, the parting the Red Sea. And because of my complaining, I miss out on what God is doing. Would you come? That's right. Come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. That's right. Come on, come on. There are a whole lot of folks that wish that they had your job. Stop complaining. There's a whole lot of folks that are in a shelter right now that wish they had your apartment. There are a whole lot of folks who are in hospice right now that wish they had your condition and that was all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Let him fix it. Let him turn your life around. Let him make your life brand new. Come on, come on. If you want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, this is your opportunity. God will give you a new language. God will open up your understanding to his word. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. You don't have to live a life that's filled with complaint. You can live a life that's filled with praise. All you've got to do is change your perspective. Change your mindset. Change your thinking. And watch what God does. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Man, woman, boy, or girl, come on. Oh, shit, my heart. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. That's right. Don't let this moment pass you by. God, I need you in my life so that I can change my perspective. The only way my perspective is going to change is if I give my life to Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can be baptized. You can be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right now. He was able. He's able. He's able. God bless you. This brother's giving his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a praise for one soul. Giving their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and being baptized in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, come on. 
there's someone still sitting in the audience. God wants to change your perspective. Come on. Don't be afraid. Leave from where you are. If you're on the balcony, come down from the balcony. Let God change your perspective. Lord, I may have to change my friends. I may have to change my environment so that you can do what you want to do in my life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's right. Leave from where you are. Let God have his way in your life. Yes, yes, yes. God has been too good to me to complain. Come on. Come on. He's been too good for me to sit around with my mouth poked out. No, God has been good to me. Come on, come on. Come to Jesus. Just now. Come to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. I'm yours, Lord. I'm going to do something about my situation. God can change my situation. Don't sit around complaining about it. Let God change your situation. Let God change your circumstance. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God bless you. Come on, come on. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hasha Maha. you're here, you want to make Refuge Temple your church home, Bishop Charles Wright Sr., your pastor, this is your opportunity to come now. You can come and be a part of this great church if you're here now. Just stand to your feet at this time. Remember the service this afternoon, and there's a, a light refreshment for those who are staying. We'd love for you to stay and be a part of the service this afternoon. Our very own Apostle James I. Clark Jr a former presider and assistant pastor of this church. He will be ministering on this afternoon. God bless you. Father, we thank you now and we praise you. We love and adore you. 
God, we ask as we leave this place, but never from your presence, that you would go with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just somebody say, I won't complain. God bless you. I love you. In the name of Jesus. goodness and your mercy.